I'm Leah Lawrence. And I'm her husband, Mitch Lawrence. And you are listening to the Southern Spirits Podcast, where I regale my husband with Southern stories of the macabre, creepy, and strange. And I drink. So what are we drinking tonight, Mitchell? Our beer this week is Tart Island. It's from Chandelure Brewing Company in Gulfport, Mississippi. It's 5.5% alcohol by volume. Let's read the can, and this is in two sections, okay? This is talking about uh, the series of beers that this is in called the Gulf Sour Series, okay? Long quote, here we go. The Mississippi Gulf Coast offers a unique and laid-back way of life. We aren't in a hurry. We wave to our neighbors. We'll share some blue crabs when our pots are full, and we always know the tide pattern. It's our way of life, and we wouldn't change it for the world. This Gulf Sour Series is brewed to be our own take on sour beers with over-the-top fruit flavors, a pleasant hint of tart, and just a little bit of sweet to balance it all out. Enjoy these unique beers fresh while you share tales of the ghost of, I'm sorry, of the Gulf and the one that got away. End quote on that. And from, uh, again, from the can, this is the specific to the beer part. Okay, so this will let you know what's in it. Sour ale brewed with bananas and kiwis. Now, doesn't that sound fun? Have a a banana beer? Um, Well, what I have to say is that this is a very interesting and welcome flavor. It's a little bit different. It's not often you find a banana flavored beer, and it's pretty freaking good. Are you wanting to try it? Is that what you're grabby handing over there? Here you go. I get grabby hands sometimes. Yeah. I can't help it. Oh, what else did I type for my thing here? Um, It's a really refreshing sour. Uh, That's how it starts, and then it's followed up with that, like, basic. I tried to help help Leah to get Leah to help me with the name of the flavor of a banana. I came up with, like, dull, and she said mild and mellow, and I was like, yeah, you can taste the banana in this. It's weird at first, but I think it's really freaking good. I gave it a 9.5 out of 10. What did you think about it, Leah? I can't taste a damn thing because all I've been drinking is margaritas and I'm... Oh, yeah. Well, spoiler. Sorry. <laughs> 9.5 out of 10 for the Tart Island. Yeah, it uh, just tastes sour to me right now, but I've t- I tasted it uh, when we first put it in the refrigerator yeah. and it cold. And while it's really cold, you can definitely taste the banana notes yeah. in it. But when it's warm, like, because Mitch has been drinking it out of a mug that's gotten a little bit room temperature and it's mm-hmm. kind of... It's a little it's bit just warmer, sour but I just opened warm. another one to pour in. So, if you want to try it now, you can. It's good. I would definitely drink plenty of them, but, mm-hmm. but I now don't we're out think of them. it's anything super special to me. But yeah, well, I like it. I like it quite a bit. I might try them again on my off time because this is work, Leah. You know that. Our shot in the dark for the night. Um, very excited about this, and I'll get there in just a moment. I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce this, so I'm going to say Orale. Orale. Orale Platinum. Distilled and bottled by Black Patch Distilling Company in Madison, Alabama, right here by us. Let's read the bottle. Spirits distilled from 100% blue agave. That's all it has to say. Um, It also says um, that it's veteran-owned and operated because this is a, you know, there's the story I think we went through when we did one of the whiskeys before. About the yeah, guy who founded the, it. The Black Patch is the people that do it, and they're in Madison, Alabama. Right. And um, the son was, uh, I think the father was also a veteran, but the yeah. son was a veteran and injured uh, mm-hmm. pretty badly he lost his in leg Iraq. Or something? Yeah, he, he lost a limb of some sort. Mm-hmm. So they started a brewery together and etc. Distillery. Distillery, excuse me. Yes. You're right. And the reason I'm so excited about this one is because we finally have a tequila type alcohol. I mean, it's tequila, but you can't call it tequila because it didn't come from Mexico. And this is the first one we found anywhere, and it's right here by us. And it's just, it's so exciting because, not because I like tequila, because I really don't, but the fact that we just are able to drink margaritas now because margaritas are the best thing in the world. Agreed. So, it's so exciting, and this is a, it's a wonderful, strong flavor that doesn't overpower. You can drink this on ice if you're a tequila drinker. Like, I'm not, and I like it on ice. I give it a 9 out of 10, because it's pretty I good by itself. I love tequila, and I will drink that, just shots mm-hmm. of it. We should have gotten a lime and some salt, but anyway. Yeah. Well, did I say it's 40%? I don't know if I did. I but yeah, this is 40%, so it's pretty strong. Yeah, 9 out of 10 on ice. Uh, we also made strawberry margaritas. 10 out of 10, because who the fuck doesn't love a frozen strawberry margarita? Right. And we did it in our Ninja Blender. Oh, God. I'm so excited. So a 9.5 out of 10 overall. It's delicious. Um, Leah, did you say you looked up what Orlay meant earlier? Yeah, 
Yes, this is from Wikipedia. Mm, I'm okay. always interested in learning new things. So this is what orale means for all of the people that don't speak Spanish <sighs> slang. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Orale is a common Spanish interjection in Mexican Spanish slang. It is also commonly used in the United States as an exclamation expressing approval or encouragement. The term has varying connotations, including an affirmation that something is impressive, an agreement with the statement akin to okay or distress. So I love it because that sort of gives me the whole timeline of what happens when you're drinking a lot of tequila so it's like <laughs> okay yeah orale tequila yeah. yes and then orale yeah i'm okay fine and then distress like orale i'm, orale. I'm out fuck off <laughs> yeah so it's like a multi orale, orale <laughs> uh, golly what a day <laughs> cute i don't know i like the term i like mm-hmm. the product very much so um i'm just so yeah. excited that we just found it because we went to the liquor store, you know, the state liquor store the other day, and I just went, I'm going to look and see if I can find anything that's not Mexican in the tequila area. Because you can't, Which really. usually you can't, because there's a couple of products that come out of Texas that mm-hmm. are actually distilled in Texas, um, but I, th- it's almost impossible to find around here, so yeah. we just were like, eh, whatever. Um, but to find something as close to us as that is, that's as actually good as this is is Mm. really like cool and exciting and i'm super pumped about it because girl tequila is my favorite thing it's a little expensive though it is a little bit expensive but any good tequila is expensive Mm -hmm. it just is um agave is so um difficult and it takes so long to grow it and harvest it yeah, I don't like, know anything about making tequila. Oh, I've watched several documentaries because I'm course. a nerd. But um, the agave, like the fruit from it, takes like like two or three. Excuse me, two or three years to like mature. God. Um, their big old the pinon part, like the big old fruit part of it, is massive. But like I said, it takes forever to grow the things. It's it's a really big process and it can only be grown in certain conditions and these uh, agave plantations are all very old and uh, yeah it's it's a really big process and like i said any like quality tequila is going to be more expensive just because of what it's made out of Mm -hmm. yeah well it's Um, delicious yeah but i love the way it tastes um i just do yeah it's real good all right well that's it for the alcohols leah so what are we going to do now? We're going to go into listener mail. 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 Ah! There we go. <laughs> That's a terrifying sound effect. <laughs> what the fuck? Listener mail. <laughs> <laughs> that is not listener mail sound worthy. Yeehaw! There you go. All right. Um, what? Okay. You, you get one. Stop. I had three. Stop. <laughs> I know you're poking it. Stop. No, I was moving it. <laughs> um, so we have a postcard all the way from Scotland. Ooh. And I am super freaking pumped. Scotland Yard? No, just Scotland, Scotland. Mm, okay. Scotland Yard's in London, right? I don't know where the fuck Scar- Scotland Yard is. Um, so this is uh, from Taru, who is actually a member of the Possum Passel mm-hmm. over on Patreon. If you also want to be one of those, uh, right. go to patreon.com slash Southern Spirits Podcast and uh, subscribe. It'd be really awesome of you. Mm-hmm. Um, but this comes from our wonderful listener who's actually from Finland. Yeah. Um, and just, I think the coolest thing about the internet is we're two po- podunk folk from <laughs> the middle of nowhere in Alabama. We have a listener from Finland who's visiting scotland and Mm -hmm. sent us a postcard going to see the pretty flowers at scotland yard mitchell that's not even a thing Mm -hmm. you're very confusing but Mm -hmm. i don't know it's just really cool how international you can be on such a low budget so if anybody Mm -hmm. out there wants to start a podcast i highly recommend it it's more than you think but it's not that much money i mean to start Uh, yeah it's not that bad (laughs) um but it has really brought a lot of cool stuff to us and we really appreciate y'all um but anyway mostly postcards um this uh postcard is of a castle um and i don't know how to pronounce its name kilkern kilchurn i'm not sure Mm -hmm. um but it's some kind of lake (laughs) 
with okay. the castle, and it is a gorgeous photograph. Is, is um, Nessie in it? It's not Loch Ness. I can okay. pronounce that. Um, it's Loch Alway. It's A-W-E. I don't know how you pronounce that. Uh, but anyway, she wrote this from Edinburgh, Scotland. Mm-hmm. It says, hello, Leah and Mitch. Hi. Greetings from Edinburgh, Scotland. Hello. Here for a short vacation, visiting an arts festival called Fringe, which, comma, parentheses, I've always wanted to visit, like... Mm-hmm. The Fringe Festival there is supposed to be freaking amazing, but anyway. Is it a, is it like for lace and stuff? No, Mitchell. It's is a, it a costuming convention? <laughs> no, it's a weird performing arts festival. There's mm-hmm. a lot of comedy, um, performance art, one-man shows, just a bunch of mm-hmm. cool, weird shit, and I'm really pumped about it. But anyway, <laughs> okay. um, anyway. Uh, called Fringe and popping in and out of whiskey shops and touring a distillery even. Uh, Keep on podcasting. Love your stories and drink reviews. Yours, Taru, a far from southern Finland. <laughs> oh, man, that's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. That needs to go up on the wall before the dogs eat it. Oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> you're right. <laughs> Our dogs like to eat anything that's not yeah. nailed down or nailed up, as the case may be. Yeah. They might eat nails. We haven't also tried a possibility. Yet. Please don't give Samus that idea. It will be terrible. <laughs> uh, Samus, did you know you can eat nails? Stop. <laughs> <laughs> we can't afford veterinary surgery right now. <laughs> anyway, so thank you very much. And if anybody wants to send us a postcard, if you want to... I mean, mm-hmm. postcards are really all I'm interested in. But anything else, yeah. something fun, cool. We got a big bag of peach rings once we that was did. awesome. We that, did. That actually was really <laughs> badass. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. I ate so many peach rings, it was problematic. I want I, to reiterate that if you send us perishable goods, please make sure they are in their original packaging. Yes, they need to be in the original packaging. My mother checks them. all of my Halloween candy. <laughs> And you may not rewrap the candy. Speaking of, it was her birthday this week. So happy birthday, Sybil. You're yeah. awesome. We love you. Happy birthday. I think she's 33. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. I'll be 32 in uh, <laughs> about a month. So she had a rough childhood. Right? That's anyway. All, I'm all right. So let's move on to our funny place name. Okay. How, how exciting for a funny place name. What are we going to do this week? We're going to Krypton, Kentucky. Krypton. Okay, now I did oh. cheat a little bit with Krypton because okay. the locals actually say Krypton, Krypton, but it's Krypton. It's spelled Krypton, and if people could pronounce things properly, it'd be Krypton, but yeah. the locals do call it Krypton. Um, Krypton is in Perry County, Kentucky, and it was initially just a small stop on a railroad, like a refueling kind of situation. Mm-hmm. It wasn't named anything. It was just like a little stop on the railroad. There were families living around there that were farmers. Excuse me. I'm having tequila burps. Uh Uh-oh. We're not going to make it through this episode. It's very possible that we don't (laughs) because, yeah. Anyway, um, so they had this little sort of community, but it was unincorporated. There wasn't a name involved. It was just, you know just that little stop there Mm -hmm. now the railroad always had sort of just names of what they called different things you know different stops if they didn't have an actual name okay um and they believe that this particular area got its name because the post office was only about 100 feet away from the depot and the post office had krypton light bulbs um, and Krypton bulbs are basically brighter than most bulbs. So are they? Mm-hmm. Oh, no. So they, when you're so, making an incandescent light bulb, a lot of the times the more expensive, the nicer bulbs mm-hmm. are filled with one of the noble gases. Um, yeah. So on the right side of your periodic table, that last row on the yeah. right. I was going to say, aren't tungsten ones, but that's the filament. That's the it. filament itself. Okay. I'm talking about the gas that's inserted in the bulb itself. Gross. Um, and that... Um, because they're inert gases, they keep things from deteriorating as quickly, mm-hmm. and it helps them burn brightly and more uh, solidly, and you know, etc. Okay. Um, and Krypton specifically makes your um, filament be able to burn 
hotter and brighter without it burning out. And it also gives it off sort of a, a blue cast of the light. So it makes the light look a lot brighter. Because mm-hmm. a lot of the times with bulbs, you're used to sort of a yellowish white light. Um, but you know, when you're driving on the road and you see those halogen lights that are bright, blue, white, mm-hmm. awful. I do. That's the kind of light that we're talking about with these Krypton bulbs. And okay. so it would have been something that was unusual, something that they noticed and they're like, oh, a Krypton bulb place, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so they, they called it Krypton <laughs> on okay. the railroad stop. And then people just started adopting it because once the railroad names something, it's pretty much named. Yeah. Um, kind of like so, the post office, right? Kind of like the post office. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so they did, in fact, um, have a U.S. Postal, uh, post office there. And there still is one there. Um, and a lot of people that are huge A- Superman nerds or mm-hmm. B chemistry nerds <laughs> like to send cards and post cards and stuff through that particular um, post office Fucking just nerds. because they like the the post mark you know yeah. um, I read something where like a chemistry teacher was getting married or something and they went there to post all of their um, oh they should have had their wedding invitations. There. yeah that's what they should have done. Missed opportunity. Yeah. Anyway, so that is Krypton or Krypton, Kentucky. Krypton. Krypton. Excellent. Well, let's do a couple of announcements real quick before we get into show stuff. So if you heard um, Tailgate Tales, you'll know that our stuff will be streaming earlier this week. We'll probably do uh, midweek minis on Sunday when you hear this um, like normal. But we'll probably go ahead and do Tailgate Tales right after that. Um, just to get it out of the way because we need to get it done. So that will be happening. Just look for it on Facebook because we've been doing it through Facebook Live now because it's easier. Yes, and it's much easier for y'all to find it. Which right. Well, no, that's what I mean. It's not yeah. easier to stream through Facebook Live. Yeah, no, it's much more difficult to do yeah. that. But it's weird. now that we've figured it out, it mm-hmm. is uh, more uh, accessible for yeah. all of our listeners. So just follow uh, the page, Southern yeah. Spirits Podcast. It will be streamed there. You can see mm-hmm. our dogs. It's really fun. We hang out. It's very informal. There's a really cute couple of dogs most of the time. <laughs> Occasionally a cat. Um, yeah. It's a lot of fun. You should join us. Also, um, the reason we're streaming early, I don't know if Mitch said it, is we're going on vacation. So. Yeah. I meant to say that. We're, we're just gone for the weekend, so yeah. we can't do any work on that weekend, so everything's going to be scheduled well in advance. So... Um, because I yeah. am going uh, moonshine tasting, and mm-hmm. I'm sorry, but I'm not <laughs> streaming from me being drunk. So. Sorry. I mean, I'd do it. I'd, anyway, <laughs> we kind of already do that. <laughs> well, yeah, but I mean, like, I don't know if y'all have done the whole Gatlinburg from bottom to top mm. or top to bottom kind of situation, hey. but that many, many shots of moonshine in one go is kind of Traumatic. Awesome. Awesome. Awesome, yes. But yeah. you know. You just walk across the street to the Bubba Gump, <laughs> get some fried shrimp to fill your gut and soak up that alcohol. It's delicious, would recommend. Hell yeah. Also, we have um ads. We did some promo swaps with some other podcasts, and I'm not sure how many we have yet, because we're doing this one a little bit in advance too. Um, because we're still waiting on some. But periodically throughout the episode we might pause with an ad without telling you because we don't know what's coming. In fact, one could go right here. Welcome to Ghostly. Pat, what are you doing? What? I want people to know that we're a podcast that takes a deep dive into some of the scariest ghost stories. But we don't do the creepy voices or weird sound effects. We debate the ghost stories. And aren't you supposed to be the skeptic? I am, but they'll find that out once they listen. Look, all you have to do is tell them to listen to Ghostly and that our listeners get to decide which stories are real. And which stories are just old folklore. Exactly. Download Ghostly wherever you find great podcasts. Oh, (laughs) jeez. Absolutely what wonderful. an ad. That we'll podcast see. sounds freaking awesome. <laughs> I don't know. You should go listen to it. I don't know what we're doing. You know, right. after you finish ours. Right. So, um, yeah, there will be some ads in this episode. Don't know where, don't know who yet. <laughs> but we've got some people we've been in contact with. So, uh, you know, you might have an ad or two in between yeah. stories right here, like I just said. And, you know, 
that's about it. Support them. They supported us. It's yeah. awesome. Yay, podcast family. Are you ready for yeah. our very first story of the evening? That's it for the announcement. So I'm so ready. Okay. Hit me with it. All right. Well, today, our first story is going to be Tom Dooley. Okay. This sounds familiar. Why have I heard this before? Because it's a song. It's a very popular folk hmm. song. Okay. Um, so we are talking about the story behind the song. Hmm. Um, so the refrain that you'll hear, like the chorus of the song is, Hang down your head, Tom Dooley. Hang down your head and cry. I, I, I. Hang down your head, Tom Dooley. Poor boy, you're bound to die. That's it. It's one of those first songs you learn when you're playing the guitar. Yeah, like it's, it's very it's, simple. So it's a very simple like uh, yeah. I learned. I think we learned how to play it on recorder or something like that when we were lame. in elementary school. But you know, fucking lame. Hang ass. down your head, Tom. Anyway, um, so shot in the dark. Oh God, I'm sorry. I was about to sip the beer. I got to put it down and reach. There we go. It's kind of loud. <laughs> so, what famous folk group recorded the hit version of Tom Dooley in 1958? I don't know any fucking folk well, groups. Yeah, I know. That's why I made the question. <laughs> um, is it A, the Everly Brothers, mm-hmm. B, the Ventures, or C, the Kingston Trio? Um, the only one I know is the Everly Brothers, so I'm going to go with B. You're wrong. Oh, it's the hell. Kingston Trio. Oh, so it wasn't the Everly Brothers anyway. Nope. So that's that's good. <laughs> All right, well, first shot of this t- um, agave, not tequila, Leah. Orale. Orale. I'm, I might throw up. Anyway. God, I want that shot so bad. Do you want to just have it? <laughs> yes. No, I'm going to take it. Okay, fine. Um, Can I have one too? <laughs> well, I only have one glass. Fine. So. Okay, Not right now. Fine. You it's have fine. a lot to do. The second story, you can have one no matter what. How about that? Okay. I will control your alcohol intake tonight. I feel, I feel you like you haven't you're... drank in a long time because you've had stroke face. <laughs> so let's calm down. You're going to get <laughs> fucked up if you have one shot of this stuff. No, you're uh, not having it right fun. now. You can have it at the end. Rude. And that's what she said. All right, I'm going to take my shot. You go ahead with the story. All right. So, oh. actually, the Kingston oh. Trio got a number one Billboard hit off of it. Um. It was oh, a very popular, dang. popular song. Oh. Um, it was, you know, just a really. Oh. Um, the some of the information that I was reading calls it a. Oh, I need some pickle juice. After a that. typical sweetheart murder ballad from Appalachia. Oh, um, so that's what you have to look forward to. Mm-hmm. Um, so the real dude behind the story of Tom Dooley is a man named Thomas C. Dula, and in the um mountains of you know north carolina uh basically doula becomes dooley real fast um Uh people don't like that soft a sound and they're gonna put a y on the end of everything like Mm -hmm. uh, my grandmother's name has that ending a sound on it and they use the y on hers a lot Yeah, her original name was yuli (laughs) <laughs> no, uh, her name's Eula, but they call her yep. Yuli or Euler. She, she, they're really bad about putting an R on the end of stuff like that, that too. So, um, oh. so yeah, they obviously it morphed from Thomas C. Dula to Tom Dooley. Um, mm. So Tom Dooley was, uh, you know, just born to a poor Appalachian Hill family. You know, Thomas C. In, Thomas Dooler. <laughs> No, in Wilkes County, North hmm. Carolina, and he was the youngest of three brothers, and he also had a younger sister named Eliza, and they ended it, like they were growing up in a community, and this community also had a family in it that had three daughters. Um, mm-hmm. The daughters' names were The whole Anne. community had three daughters. Well, I mean, in the community, there was a family that had three daughters okay. who are very pivotal mm-hmm. in this case. Oh. So the three girls' names are Anne, Laura, and Pauline Foster. Um, so as they were growing up together, they played together all the time. All the kids just, you know, having a hoot nanny, that kind of fun thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and it turns out that Tom and Anne were real sweet on each other hey. to the point 
where Anne's mama found Anne and Tom in bed together when oh, Anne was 14 and Tom was 12. Oh, 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 okay. I was, okay. That's not near as bad as I thought. Uh-uh, no. I thought Tom no. was an adult. Mm-mm. Okay. They were all kids together. Okay, I get, okay. Yeah. It's not, it's, I mean, it's still not great to hear, but it's like, I accept this. Yeah. I'm I mean, it's weird, but uh, kids are kids, whatever. Um, oh, God. But yes. So oh. she caught them in bed together. And so, like, this is sort of foreshadowing of the fact that Tom likes to sleep around. Tom really <laughs> likes to sleep around. When he was 12? <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. Um, like, this this dude is like a... Um, a libertine, I guess. Is a the Casanova. Best way to put it. A ca- that's a good one. Casanova. Yeah. He's very much a ladies' man. He likes to sweet talk ladies and just, you know, mm-hmm. that's his his nature, I guess. My God. Um. So three months before he turned eighteen years old, uh, he enlisted in the Confederate Army as a private, and uh, he joined the Company K of the Forty Second North Carolina Infantry Regiment. Um, and while he was in the Civil War fought, uh, he was pretty well liked among his, you know, group because he was a very talented banjo player. Oh, um, okay. He, he was a really good musician, it turns out. <laughs> Never would have thought banjo um, playing would get your friends. <laughs> yeah. He was listed in some of the muster roles that are still like that they've historically documented and stuff they call him a musician and a drummer and so he's done a few other things you know Mm -hmm. um as as a private but he was injured a couple of times and he ended up being captured and sent to a prisoner of war camp up north oh no um and so you know it, it was rough for him i guess but eventually he was released in april of 1865 after the war was over and he returned home now The other three of his brothers did not, so he was the last surviving son in that family. That's sad. Um, And it turns out that by the time the whole war was over, he came back home. Um, Anne had married, before the war started, That the girl that he was into. Anne had... Yeah, but she was 20, so it's okay. Yeah. Right. Well, Anne had already married an older gentleman in town named James Milton. Mm-hmm. He was farmer. He was the town cobbler. Um, just he, he was also in that same community and area, and she decided, hey, might as well. Let's marry this dude. Now, he was also in the Civil War, and he also got captured... Um, by the Union Army. He was actually also in the Battle of Gettysburg. Oh, um, but wow. he made it through. He came back home. And he was just hanging out with Anne, doing stuff, just being Fuckin'. married and stuff. Um, well, I think they, someone they was... They never fucked, but as you said, they did stuff. <laughs> now, someone was fucking, but it wasn't <laughs> poor Mr. Melton. Oh. Because as soon as Tom Dooley comes back in town, and sees him and knows you know and i understand filthy slut <laughs> and she's like you know what i know i'm married but <laughs> <laughs> but have you seen what <laughs> he did when he was 12 on tom dooley when he was 12 he, he knew how to slang it <laughs> jesus christ anyway, i can't so, believe i just said that as soon Ugh. as he gets back into town he starts having a, a relationship with ann again like biblically um <laughs> And so his reputation, though, obviously precedes him. And I mean, she was not the only person that he was fooling around with. Oh, because he also started a, a relationship. Oh, he was a little tramp. He yeah, was a little okay. tramp. Of course. Because she was in love with him, like hardcore, just him. Right. Um, but he also started a relationship with Laura, her younger sister. Oh, no. Oh, bro. Bro. Oh, excuse me. I think it was a cousin, not uh, a sister. Either way. either way, they were like right there. It was either a first cousin or a sister. I don't remember because I'm a little tipsy. But so this is a small town, though. It was right? a very small town. Okay, well, like spread so, out the the you know the r- yeah fucking a little bit. Don't yeah yeah. I know it's a small town, but like there's got to be more than one family for right? you to fuck. Right. Anyway, oh. but so he starts, you know. Fucking. Yeah, he starts fucking Laura Foster. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And that, um, according to just the oral tradition and the folklore of what happened, um, the story is, is that Laura got pregnant. Oh, no. And Tom was like... With a little dooley baby? 
a little dooly baby. <laughs> and Tom decided, look, I'm going to make an honest woman of you. I don't want to be that guy. So let's elope because obviously her family would be a little bit pissed off if they found out that she was pregnant, um, yeah. you know, pre-marriage or oh, whatever. No. And so uh, according to the story, one morning they met, it was supposed to be, uh, it was the morning of May the 25th of 1866. They okay. got up early in the morning, snuck out of their houses. Um, he rides over to Laura's house. Uh, Laura gets on the horse and they head on out. Mm-hmm. Now, somewhere in between them leaving her daddy's house and heading off to get eloped <laughs> or whatever, uh-huh. Laura gets murdered somewhere. Uh, what? What the fuck? Yeah. So, no one knows exactly what happened. I didn't know that's where this was going. Yeah. I thought it was, we were just going to talk about a guy that fucked a lot. No. Jesus. No, he was an accused murderer. God damn it, Leah. Um, Spoilers. Yeah, right? Um. So, oh, a lot of the stories that people tell say that Anne's the one who did it. Mm-hmm. Um, they say that Anne was so jealous that he was fucking her cousin yeah. or sister, depending on how drunk I am. I'm Who, not sure. <laughs> whomever it may be. Whichever one it was. Her relative. She was yeah. so pissed off. Her flesh and blood. That he was fucking her relative. She was jealous because she had found out that he was going to marry her. And she was like, oh, no, man, that's my man. Even though I'm already married. But no, no, yeah. you can't have someone. Oh, she was still married. She was still married to this She guy. didn't even leave her husband. Did not. She was just fucking around on him. My God. And so she rides, she hears about it. She understands their plan and she rides out and she stabs her to death. Well, that's what, that's, that's one of, the one story. story. That is okay. one of the story. Okay. Um, other people believe and, uh, other people say that it was actually Tom and actually what gets brought up in the trial that's about to happen mm-hmm. um, is that uh, they believe that uh, basically someone gave Tom Dooley syphilis. Oh, gross. And he was mad about it. And he believed that Laura gave him syphilis and he passed that syphilis on to Anne. Um, and so he was real mad about it and stabbed her to death for giving him syphilis. So kind of like Chris Brown and Rihanna. What? That's why, that's the story of why Excuse Chris Brown. Excuse me, what? That's the story of why Chris Brown beat up Rihanna. For real? She gave him herpes. It's what, I mean, it's like, you know, I don't know if that's true. It's the, it's the I'm saying that's what gossip. has been said. Was okay. she gave him herpes and he was like, you know, you stepping out on me, bitch. And then he proceeded to beat a woman who is much smaller than him. He also has a history of domestic abuse and violence. Yeah, fuck that so, guy. you know. Anyway. But anyway, like, you know, getting herpes is not a reason to, you know. <laughs> beat someone I mean, to death? It sucks. I'm sure it sucks real bad, but like, you know, calm the fuck down, man. Anyway. You're a felon. Yeah. Well, no, a felon means you get convicted. You're a criminal. You don't have to be convicted to be a criminal. He's an asshole. It's fine. Let's there keep going. Go. Perfect. Um, I have so many thoughts. <laughs> So uh, that is the other story is that, you know, but in the whole um, trial situation, it comes out the doctor, the local doctor testifies Mm -hmm. that he had, in fact, treated uh, uh, Tom Dooley and Anne for syphilis. But he had also treated Pauline Foster, who was also a relative of those women, first for syphilis and that um he had all been treating them for syphilis um and it was pauline that had it first was this before so, HIPAA laws i'm guessing <laughs> i guess he's just, i mean everybody's got syphilis around here but she had it first so he's been fucking all these folks like that little doctor just oh. like girl <laughs> Let me tell you who has hemorrhoids today. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, I saw so many buttholes today. Oh, bless it. Anyway, um, but according to some of the other testimony during the trial, um, one of the cousins, uh, Pauline, who is actually the one that started the syphilis problem, mm-hmm. testified that Anne was the one who stabbed her because Anne had taken her to the grave of Laura um, 
just to sort of because she was real guilty about it kind of thing Mm -hmm. um and so eventually they did locate the grave of laura foster and her body was sort of in a shallow small grave and she was found sort of like curled up in the fetal excuse me position to fit Mm -hmm. in the grave and she had been stabbed through the chest um you know and she bled out and so Tom basically fled to, um, I believe, Tennessee, and eventually they caught him, and they had him stand trial. Um, but after his arrest, uh, one of the former, uh, is it a governor? Yeah, the former governor of North Carolina, uh, Governor Zebulon Vance, which is a great wow. name. Wow. Um, decided to Zebulon. <laughs> Zebulon. I mean, names that you don't hear anymore, but really should. Yeah. Um, so Zebulon represented him pro bono because he was a Confederate veteran and he believed him and they had met in the war and that kind of thing. And because no one will hire a lawyer named Zebulon. <laughs> I mean, he was the governor of the fucking state. I think he's fine. <laughs> he wasn't duly um, elected. Uh, you know that he just like stepped in. And was like, I'll do it. And everybody's like, fucking Zebulon fine. again. No, so they, he was their, their law, he, mm, y'all? <laughs> Orly. <laughs> Tequila. <laughs> Would you get those little burps? It's so funny. I'm sorry, y'all. Mm. I shouldn't burp into the microphone. I yeah. know some of you hate it, but yeah. sorry. I'm one of them. <laughs> no, you're not. You keep your bodily functions to themselves. Okay. Agreed. To yourself? Anyway, so mm. he is representing Tom Dooley, you know, j- for free, just because he believes he's innocent and, you know... Why not? Um, And he ended up getting the trial moved from uh, Wilkesboro to Statesville because he didn't believe that the town could give him a fair trial there in Wilkes County because everybody knows everybody and he's clearly fucked most of the town. Um, So he was like, maybe we should move this to a place where they don't know this guy. And so they did. But eventually he was, in fact... Uh, convicted for the murder of Laura. Um, but he was given another trial because he was appealed. You know, he appealed the, the decision. Mm-hmm. Um, and he was convicted again. And yeah, so basically uh, there was another guy that was supposedly his uh, like accomplice, I guess, named Jack Keaton. Mm-hmm. But uh, Tom was like, yeah, no, he had nothing to do with it. Uh set him free so they did Mm -hmm. and he also said Anne had nothing to do with it Um, you should set her free too Um, (laughs) so they did and uh, she may have syphilis but that that is not a declaration of guilt (laughs) yeah and so as he was uh, standing on the gallows ready to get uh, you know executed Mm -hmm. um, his last words were reported to be gentlemen do you see this hand I didn't harm a hair on the girl's head um, and he was executed there on May the 1st of 1868, um, about two it. years after the murder actually happened. Mm-hmm. Um, and so they, you know, got his body and buried it. And yeah, so that's sort of the legend of Tom Dooley. Um, I think he did it. I think Ian did it for sure, but whatever. I think they both did it, and then they gave it syphilis. <laughs> gross it already had syphilis technically but anyway Anyway. um but uh there is also a story a local legend uh that sort of finishes out this whole story is that Anne actually confessed to the murder on her deathbed (gasps) um she confessed that she was just jealous in a rage um Mm -hmm. and she stabbed her and after she stabbed her she realized oh shit i just stabbed someone and she like got Tom to help her dig the grave and conceal the body. Um, and yeah, um, mm. they say the weird part of this in this article that it says people, this part is from Wikipedia, by the way. Um, it says okay. that people in the area still say that on her deathbed, Anne saw black cats on the walls and could hear and smell frying bacon, which I guess <laughs> is like an omen that you're going to hell. But if hell has bacon, yeah. I don't know. That sounds like a stroke. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh. How do they know what she was smelling? Was she just screaming, bacon? I hear that bacon. Cats and bacon? <laughs> Black cats and bacon. That's the name of the 
episode. Mm-hmm. No. Oh, yeah. It's going on the list. Okay. I like it. I'm sorry if I'm crunching on the on the microphone. I'm trying to type at the same time. And we have frozen margs, and um, they're excellent. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's the whole first story? That is the whole first story. All right. Well, I'm sure an ad or two is going in right here. So y'all enjoy this or these promos for other podcasts and go give them a listen. Hi, I'm Kelsey. And I'm Alexa. And have you always been curious if Winona Ryder is actually crazy? Are you dying to learn how to stay out of a cult? Then you should definitely check out the Psyched Podcast. The podcast where two psychotherapists analyze real and fictional figures from pop culture and tell you all about the obscure psychological phenomenon that your Psych 101 class didn't have time to tell you about. So grab your cocktail and head over to thepsychedpodcast.com and check us out. And don't forget to go to therapy and get your shit together. Bye. Ever wonder what terrible thing happened on this day in history? My name is Karina Bemisterfer writer and host of Morning Cup of Murder, your daily short-form true crime podcast that tells you all about rampage killers, sudden spree murders, famous serial killers, and new cases to explore each and every day. Morning Cup of Murder is the perfect addition to your morning routine. So, if you like your coffee hot but your bones chilled, sit back and start your day with a Morning Cup of Murder. Subscribe everywhere you listen to podcasts and find the show on social media at Morning Cup of Murder. And remember, stay safe. Okay, y'all. Thanks for sticking around after that ad. I know it was um, wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. And it probably made you change over right now. But thank you for coming back to finish this episode. I was going to say, if you stuck with us, thank yeah, you. thank you. And here comes the second story. Leah, go. All right. Perfect. Well, we're going to our second story. And this one is fucking weird, y'all. Um, so I like to Google around when I'm doing research to just sort of try to find something that's a little different, something that I've never heard before, mm-hmm. little weird pieces of history. Excellent. Um, and I ended up on the Miami New Times website. Oh, no. Website. There's probably a lot of shit there. I don't know. It was a weird listicle. Um, about Mm -hmm. weird shit that happened in Florida. Um, And I Google weird shit that happened in Florida a lot just because of Trailer Trashy, our other podcast that I am on. You've done lots of research to Um, do. So I (laughs) I research weird shit in Florida a lot. Um, (laughs) You were doing that before you were on podcasts, by the way. Also true. Florida's just interesting. but um, And pretty. Also true. I love the Um, rain. I love beach rain. I really do. Anyway, continue. (laughs) All right. Um, (laughs) Anyway, so I was on that website and I came across um, the listicle about weird shit in Florida. And it was like this one time there was a dictator on the Florida Keys in Cedar Key. And I was like, excuse me, what? Like that ran a society? We're getting there. What? And I was like, excuse me, I need to know everything about this immediately. (laughs) So I Googled it and I found a really good article on Smithsonian.com about it. And we're going to, a lot of my information is taken from that article. Um, I did some Wikipedia-ing and that Miami News Times article. So Mm -hmm. sit back, relax. We're talking about William Billy Cottrell, the Floridian dictator. This sounds so interesting. Yeah. I'm super excited. I'm, I'm really pumped about it, actually. Yeah. Because I had literally never heard of this, and Mm -hmm. it is bananas. So, What if it's all fake? It's not. What if it never happened? The Smithsonian would not lead me wrong. Okay. They got shit about, you know, the earth being round in there. Whatever. I'm just saying. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Anyway. So, it all happened, like that big shit happened in the spring of 1890. Mm -hmm. And it turns out that the president had to get the fuck involved to get this crazy asshole out of this town in Florida that he was basically terrorizing. Um, Mm -hmm. And so my question for you, Shot in the Dark. Oh, God. Okay. So if you'll remember, the time this happened was 1890. So Shot in the Dark, who was the president at the time? Um, 1890? Yes. 
I could maybe figure this out. Okay. Go ahead. Was it can, A? Can I guess ahead of time real quick? And if I'm wrong, we can do the... Yeah, sure. Because I'm not super knowledgeable on presidents. But I think this was James Garfield. You're wrong. Okay, well then let's do the thing. You're actually really close, but you're wrong. Right. Um, is it A, Benjamin Harrison, B, Grover Cleveland, or C, William McKinley? Uh, Cleveland. No. Fucking Also a. close, but no. You got the one in the middle. God damn uh, it. Benjamin Harrison. I didn't even know that. I thought that was a beetle. <laughs> That's George. I know. I know. Give me the shot. <laughs> yeah, you're taking it because I'm I'm not doing that again. <laughs> I'm really not. Do you have something to wash it with? It's just more margarita. Do you have anything yeah. else? No, that'll take care of it. I promise. It's fucking rough, y'all. Again, I'm Woo! not. Yeah, it's it's. I that sniffed shot's rough. it, and I should not have. That's what she said. Just put it in the mouth. Don't sniff it. Oh. That's what I had. I do that every time before I take a shot, and I always say, shouldn't have smelled it. Always. It's rough, isn't it? Uh oh. Leah's fine. This is a problem. Leah, we have to go to work tomorrow. Shut up. <laughs> I have to go to work. I mean, you don't necessarily have oh, to. Oh, no. I have to go to work. I have so much shit to do on Friday. <laughs> Yeah, we're doing this on Thursday, y'all. <laughs> Sorry, I should not <laughs> identify when we're recording things, but... Of course you should. Damn, I have a lot of work to do. Um, So, <laughs> I should probably not do another one of those, but whatever, it's fine. Well, you're not going to anyway. Yeah, but I'm thinking about having a third margarita. <laughs> no, don't do that. Okay, fine. Yeah. Uh, okay, Leah has finished... Mine so that you have something to sip on? Seriously, do you want the rest of mine? Yes. Okay. Leah has finished all of her two margaritas. <laughs> and she's now having the second half of my second one. But I have beer and tequila on ice to drink, so I'll be fine. Orale. Orale. <laughs> anyway, okay, so let's hope that I can make it through this and still be coherent. Fingers um, crossed. Yes. Yeah. So... The first alert that something fucking weird was happening in Cedar Key uh, that alerted the president at the time, who was President Harrison, mm -hmm. um, the first like inkling of, hey, something's fucking wrong down here that he got was from a local lady named Mrs. Rose Bell, who was a widow there in Cedar Key. And she wrote to the president on August the 4th of 1889. And she said... Uh-oh, she's got the hiccups. Yep. She was like, hey, we've got a crazy fucking drunk man, and he is literally terrorizing the entire town. He is the mayor. Everybody's terrified of him. How'd she get in touch with the police again? No, with the president. The she president. just wrote him a fucking letter, because oh, okay. apparently that was a thing. You're right. I don't... I, I swear I'm listening. <laughs> God damn, I'm drunk. And I'm lost. But Go she ahead. was like, look... This belligerent, crazy mayor asshole has done <laughs> some terrible stuff. Ugh. Like, A, he forced this uh, black guy who, you know, after the Civil War, totally a free man, um, forced him to parade down the street being all weird in a stupid costume. Not nice. You think um, that's weird? <laughs> Check out the 19, from where you are until the 1970s, lady. <laughs> weird right fucking asshole Ugh. anyway so <laughs> they also she's also saying hey um yeah he also shot his sister's husband just because they got in a fight Jesus. just shot him dead sorry about it um and then also like yeah he drinks all the time he's absolutely terrible what are you gonna do about it um she was like, basically, everybody's scared of him in town, but I don't have a son or a husband anymore for him to shoot because he's mad at me. So I, you know, I'll write the letter. Fuck it. You know, I'm so this, confused. What do you mean? He's mad at her? No. What? I don't know what you just said. <sighs> I don't have a son or husband for him to shoot anymore because he's mad at me. No, like the reason that she was not timid and afraid of this man is she doesn't have anybody to okay. be widowed anymore because she already is. He one. won't shoot her, is what we're he saying. wouldn't shoot a woman, but he would shoot a son or a husband. Fuck and that, man! Equal opportunity. <laughs> I guess. That fucking sexist. But asshole. anyway, she was like, "Look, President, you better do fucking something." <laughs> 
Look, President. And the quote from President Harrison about this, about the letter, is, quote, It was a very grim commentary upon the condition of the social order at so- uh, Cedar Keys that only a woman had the courage to file charges mm. against Cottrell. So, sexist yeah. butt face, but whatever. Strong enough for a man. <laughs> Made, made for, for a, a woman. woman yeah mm. oh we did that together weird jinx <laughs> so this is what was going on mm-hmm. so uh like so the cedar keys is it's it's a town on it's 130 miles north of tampa it is a small archipelago off the gulf coast of florida um and it is just it, right now it's like a nature wildlife ret- refuge like a preserve um and it's pretty small i think the top population at its very peak is only like 2000 people so it's not a lot of people but it's very isolated and it is a key so it's you know like islandish kind of mm-hmm. um and so it was also like a really critical supply location for uh, the United States Army during the uh, Seminole Wars and the Union troop occupied the troops occupied it during the Civil War. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a place that a lot of imports and shipping came into the United States from Mexico and other places. So it was a pretty big deal for being as small as it was. Um, so what had happened was uh, this guy named William Cottrell, they called him Billy, uh, was first elected in March of 1889. And he got elected because he basically intimidated everybody into doing it with a gun. Hmm. Um, he, but not the ladies. N- well, I mean, they couldn't vote. Right. So. Suffrage had not happened yet. Exactly. Um, so basically he was from a rich family. His daddy was a state senator. His brother owned the big store in town. He was married to a woman who was very well connected politically. And so he ran for mayor and he intimidated and flashed his gun at people saying, you better fucking elect me. Um, And so they did. What what terrible could happen? Turns out a lot. No, you get elected Um, and then you start acting for the people. Like even... When he first got elected, though, he was 33 when he got elected. Damn, and you can do this shit in your 30s? Yeah, apparently. I'm going to be the mayor of Hartzell. <laughs> I mean, so soon. Couldn't be any worse than some of the ones we've had before. <laughs> I don't even know who the mayor is right now. Uh, Cliff Knight? Maybe that was a couple mayors ago. I don't remember. Cliff Knight. Cliff Knight, I believe. <laughs> but um, no, oh, we had a mayor. Out there Google mayor of Hartzell, Alabama, and let us know. We had a mayor a couple years ago that got a DUI in town. I don't know how you managed to fucking do that, but he'd had a few before, but he got a DUI in Hartzell. Yeah. And then when that whole Ashley Madison scandal, when all that whole Ashley Madison scandal came out, he was all over it. Yeah. Like he was definitely. Yeah. He had like multiple accounts multiple on Ashley Madison because you know, he's old and he's like, how did I log in? I'll just do another one. <laughs> It's so, so yeah, it was so a many. really big scandal in Hartzell like five <laughs> years ago. But anyway, oh, it was so funny though. God, it, it was, was great. really funny. But oh well, um, he and his wife were not uh, on good terms after that came out. But anyway, so um, so back to the eighteen nineties. <laughs> Um, so this man, when he was even first elected, you know, when he was 33, he was just like, I don't even know what you have to do to be mayor. So he like kind of disappeared for more than a month and like just let the town Mm -hmm. chill for itself for a month before he came back to actually do his job. Like Sounds like it was a good idea. Yeah. This guy was a rich asshole that had no idea what was involved in mayoring. He just Mm -hmm. wanted to be the mayor. Um, And everybody says, you know, hey, when he's not drinking, he's fine. He's Mm -hmm. normal. He's whatever. But the thing is, he doesn't get sober very often. (laughs) And he behaves like an absolute nut when he's had any bit of whiskey. So like Mm -hmm. five years before he actually gets elected as mayor, he was... um, in a sailing race, like a sailing competition <laughs> okay. on his family's schooner, oh, which was called the Nanny. <laughs> and it was there in Tampa uh, Bay. It was named after the woman who raised him. Right. <laughs> Ugh. 
<laughs> anyway. <laughs> But uh, they were they were sailing, and another boat dared to get ahead of the nanny. And Billy got so mad at these people for being better boatsmen than he was mm-hmm. that he went down into the hull of the ship, got a gun, and starts aiming at the people on the other ship. And the crewmates had to be like, guys, you can't shoot the competition. That's like fucking ridiculous. Yep. Put it down, you crazy motherfucker. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, eventually he didn't shoot those people. But that kind of leads you to believe to the kind of ridiculousness this man is going to mm-hmm. get up to. Um when you're married, you don't need to shoot them, though. Yeah. What? Because you just get to win. Oh. What? Yeah. <laughs> cool. Um, People so... beat the mayor. They get fucking beaten. Oh. Or shot. Gotcha. You get it. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Favoritism. Sorry. Nepotism? I don't know. No. Whatever the mayor equivalent is of nepotism. Meritism. I'm oh, a little God. drunk and I think you are too. I'm having trouble. <laughs> um but anyway, so they the like some of this stuff was covered in um a lot of the newspapers after it became a flap after people kind of realized what was flap. going on and some of the things that this guy did um Apparently, a telegraph operator pissed him off, and so he forced a local black guy to, at gunpoint, like, he's like, hey, I don't want to beat this guy to death, but I'm going to make you do it with my gun. So he forces this gentleman to beat a telegraph operator almost to death, like, just, you know, pointing a gun at it, hey, I'm going to shoot you, and he obviously would shoot someone if he wasn't, Uh you know. So he does that. Um, He held... A bunch of ladies at the general store hostage at gunpoint just for funsies he thought it was hilarious so he just <laughs> held a bunch of women grocery shopping at gunpoint God, um, how bad did we need the internet in 1890 i mean right <sighs> um it was even said that when he was a kid he was such a fucking psychopath that like an old man corrected him like you know hey you know maybe maybe calm the fuck down and the kid was like oh hell no and he pulled out his little pocket knife and starts stabbing the old man oh shit like um and there's also uh, a local hotel sort of and i think part of it's still there um but there are bullet marks still left over from this mayor's uh drunken like brawl with a, a patron like while he was mayor yeah while he was mayor still mm-hmm. like the flinging bullets all over the fucking place. Mm-hmm. Um, so eventually, like, the townspeople are absolutely terrified. Uh, I mean, all of the law enforcement officers are basically in his pocket or are terrified that they're going to be the next one to get shot. Mm-hmm. Um, he's an absolute menace. No one, everybody's scared of his family, scared of his wife's family, scared of their influence and power. And so nobody that's supposed to be taking care of the community is actually doing so because they're all terrified. Right. Um, but eventually, in 1890, a man named J.H. Pinkerton comes to town. Now, he was named the customs collector. Um, so he was the one in charge of collecting custom duties and generating the revenue off of things being imported through mm-hmm. that port or whatever. Um, and he was, I mean, that is a pretty big position. And he was appointed directly through um, the... Uh, Harrison administration. Okay. I was thinking Garfield, and I was like, That's, hey, that was the wrong answer. That's what I said. Um, and so he was directly appointed, you know, by that administration. So he has pretty high up ties in the Republican Party. Mm. Um, and so Used he, to be the good guys. Eh, well, maybe. <laughs> anyway, so he showed up, and he clearly was like, okay, this fuckhead has got to go. Um so eventually he like they've butted heads a few times but it comes to the point where Cottrell the the mayor is just like I don't like this guy I don't like that he's got authority and is trying to calm me the fuck down because I don't want to Mm -hmm. Um, this is my town I'll do whatever I want with it so he comes and he basically threatens uh mr pinkerton saying you know if you don't quit your job i'm gonna kill you 
And Mr. Pinkerton sends a telegram to Washington, D.C. saying, um, excuse me, do you understand that there is a crazy fucking lunatic down here as the mayor? Mm -hmm. You might want to get someone on this shit. Um, So now they've gotten two letters at the White House. Yes. Um, And so the feud kind of escalates. They're back and forth this whole time. And Pinkerton is like, okay, look, dude, if you just resign as mayor... Let it go. We're not going to keep going with this. Like, you've got to step down. Like, this is not cool. You're not even doing your job. Fucking resign. And obviously, this crazy-ass motherfucker is like, mm I'm the mayor. I'm going to continue to be the mayor. Mm-mm. I am basically the king here. Uh, you quit. <laughs> and so... You quit. Um, you quit. So, Cottrell ends up going to the customs house where Pinkerton works and lives. Um, and it was May the 9th of 1890. Mm-hmm. And he brings the city marshal with him. And the city marshal's name is J.R. Mitchell. And he says, hey, open this building up. We've got to do something. Just some kind of arbitrary, you know, reason to pick a fight, basically. Um And so after all that happens, um, Pinkerton ends up writing a uh, dispatch to the Treasury Department about what was going on with the Customs House and all of that stuff. And excuse me, um, Mm. Mitchell or or basically uh, the mayor had the marshal tell him to open it up or you know, we're going to shoot you or something like that. And he refused to open the customs house because it's after hours. The mayor has no authority over this particular thing. It's a federal property, like get the fuck out. Mm -hmm. Um, And so this is quote, this is the quote of what he, um, what the mayor was yelling at Mr. Pinkerton quote, shoot the goddamn Republican son of a bitch. If he fails to do so, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> um, he says uh, he then called me all the vile names he could think of in a loud and angry voice and said I will make it a hell for you and your set as long as you stay in Cedar Keys and many other vile and equally bad many other things vile and equally bad using all the time the most profane oaths and vile epithets um, so yeah Pinkerton is a real snooty bitch and mm. Anyway, I like him. He makes me laugh. But anyway. I enjoyed that speech. Yeah. But basically, he's he's threatening to kill this federal agent. And so that letter, the second letter from Pinkerton is enough to get people worried about it. So because the local authorities aren't doing anything and won't, you know, do anything at all against the mayor, um, he... He basically calls to Washington and says, hey, y'all, send something out. This is ridiculous. Someone's really going to get hurt here, and it's probably going to be me. So the Revenue Service sends a ship out called McLean to the islands um, on May the 15th. And there was a ship captain of the McLean named Captain Thomas Smythe. And they arrived a few days after this confrontation at the shipping house. Um And uh, Smythe wrote later, um, quote, the newspaper reports are not only not exaggerated, but do not tell one half of this man Cottrell's crimes. The fact that it the fact is that people here are in a perfect state of terror and are unable to obtain assistance or protection from the state authorities owing to the influence wielded by Cottrell and the methods resorted to in frightening and terrorizing the witnesses. So basically, it is lockdown fucking cuckoo bananas. This man is terrorizing an entire city. That sounds so scary. I know, right? Yeah. Um, So they have this battleship off the coast, and so with Smythe's crew and uh, additional marshals that they had brought along, federal marshals, um, they basically launched a search for the mayor. And they searched homes, businesses, swamps, forests, everything. Um, They made it all the way up the Suwannee River out of where that boat could even get to. um, And they couldn't find him. um, But they basically had that ship still moored off the um, 
off the coast there just to sort of scare him to keep him from trying to come back and regain control of it. Um, but of course, <sighs> Southerners being what we are, mm-hmm. um, just the fact that like they had been terrorized for so long by this jerk face. But they also didn't like the fact that federal agents were like coming in the island and searching their homes and stuff like that. Why? And those people were like, huh? Like what? Uh, uh. Because the Civil War was still really fresh in their minds and they had had an occupying Union force. Right. Okay. And Got they it. had also still not been through any kind of reconstruction because they were focused on bigger cities and stuff like that. Yeah. And so this place was not doing as great as it could have been and a lot of anti-northern sentiment was still a big problem Mm -hmm. down there and the fact that it was federal troops coming in on their soil and and looking through their homes and stuff like that and it caused a pretty big deal and a lot of back and forth between washington and the locals about who was allowed in the town and etc but suffice to say the locals weren't happy about it but washington was like look I mean, we've tried to be as gentle as possible, but this guy is mm-hmm. a complete and total nut job. And like, I mean, we got to find him and then like, we'll leave. Sorry, guys. But, you know, um, so eventually um, they had not found Cottrell. They searched for him all through Florida, but Cottrell had actually made his way all the way up the Suwannee River towards uh, Georgia. Um, and then from Georgia, he traveled into Alabama and oh no. he made it all the way to Montgomery, which is oh. the sort of the middle of Alabama. Yeah, it's south. A little south of South uh, Central, kind of. Yeah, South Central. Um, <clears throat> so <laughs> it turns out um, Cottrell is not good at staying away from the booze at all. Who is? Um, right. So days. on November the 5th of that same year, uh, 1890, he was arrested uh, in Montgomery for um, picking a fight with a restaurateur. A restaurateur? Um, a restaurateur. Does that just mean someone who was at a restaurant or someone no, who ran someone a restaurant? No, someone who owns a restaurant. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I missed something. Um, previously, so like when he was in Alabama and made it to Montgomery, they uh, knew who he was and they knew he was wanted. So they arrested him, but they released him on bond because you had to um, mm. just to await his trial date or whatever. Um, right. But while he was out on bond, he got in a fight while he was drinking with mm-hmm. this person that owned the restaurant. Um, and the restaurant tour, the restaurant tour. Right. Got it. Um, And so uh, Cottrell, quote, swore vengeance upon Montgomery, Alabama police chief. (laughs) Uh, His name was Adolph Gerald. Oh, of course Um, it was. And he told the people that he was hanging out with that he planned to kill Adolph Gerald. Um, And so he he challenged the chief to a duel. Um, So the chief was like... Yeah, sure, fine, whatever. We'll do it. <laughs> I ain't got shit else to do today. It's <laughs> I mean, a Tuesday. It's, it's Montgomery. What are we going to do? Really? Um, so, right after 11 a.m. in the morning, uh, Cottrell comes into the main part of town uh, in a horse drawn buggy. Um, uh, but uh, Adolph Gerald was like, I'm not fucking doing this. I see his head. I see him. He double tapped that guy with a double barrel shotgun oh, wow. and killed him right on the spot. Wow. Um, that's, so, that's huge. Yeah. <laughs> so there was no 10 paces turn and draw. He was just like, I can. No, fuck you, dude. <laughs> like, just you've threatened me. You're a super douche. He unloaded both rounds oh. into this guy. Um, and so. According to the Montgomery Advertiser, uh-huh. he was, quote, a bloody and ghastly spectacle. Um, still the paper today. Yeah, it the is. The Montgomery the, Advertiser mm-hmm. is still still the newspaper. Yep. I was in um, that paper a bunch growing up, not for shooting anybody. In the head. <laughs> I was going to say, I don't think you shot anybody with a double-barreled shotgun, but well, not I yet. could be wrong. I do plan to go back for Christmas at some point this year. Oh, uh, anyway. So we'll see what happens. All right. Well, um, so, yeah. Um, basically, <laughs> even though they brought in the freaking Coast Guard to, like, bail this town out, a ridiculous um, 
police chief in Montgomery, Alabama is the one who ended up <laughs> doing this guy. In. Oh, I've never heard that. That's so fun. <laughs> Isn't it weird? Yeah, it's great. But yeah, so that's how a weird sheriff or no police chief named Adolf. <laughs> yeah. Kept. That was a really popular name, you know? Yeah, that? but you don't see any Adolfs nope. anymore. And you also don't see that mustache anymore because they both kind of got out of favor. Yeah. You know? Weird, right? I have a feeling the name Donald would be doing the same thing very soon. <sighs> Bless it. <laughs> Which oh. is really sad because oh. Donald Duck's like one of my favorites, and Donald I, Duck's a fucking douchebag too. Fuck that shit. Yeah, but he's angry and he doesn't like to wear pants. Exa- and I very much. That's why he's the president, <laughs> Leah. Donald Jesus Duck Christ. is not the president. Okay. <laughs> I mean, close, but oh, no. If you say so. Oh. He's angry anyway. and he doesn't like to wear pants, like all of us. Right. Welcome to the South, everybody. Mm. Anyway, well, that was weird. It and, was fun. Uh, yeah. I enjoyed it. That well, was do the whole we, story. Uh, do we want to get a toast now? We can. Everybody hoist your half margarita in the sky. It, do it without slurring your words. Um. Okay. <laughs> Not so you, the people out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. We're going to have a toast. Um, and we're going to toast Tom Dooley and <sighs> Cedar Keys, I guess, because they had to deal with... Mm-hmm. Deal Uh-oh. with some crazy bullshit. So, <laughs> uh-huh. hoist that goblet. Let's get going. Remember old Tom Dooley, who thought with the wrong head, stuck it where it shouldn't go, and now two folks are dead. Uh-huh. Don't elect a drunkard as mayor of your key. They'll have to call the Navy in and get the guy to flee. Drink. Can I just say that uh, addendum to the first l- two lines of that? Um all those people are dead. Not two of them. They're all dead. Yeah, but in the story, yeah, two of them ended up dying because he was fucking people They're he shouldn't all be. They're dead. Mm-hmm. And then that one lady had the bacon and cats thing, so. Oh, God. Oh, bacon plus cats equals every day for me. <laughs> Perfect. Perfection. It's heaven. Mm-hmm. Bacon and cats. You know what's up. Not cat bacon, though. No, that would Never be gross. Also, make cat bacon. Mm-mm. Steve would be greasy as fuck. Yeah, he's a little fat. That's why he would make <laughs> some great fucking bacon strips. Oh, uh, please don't eat our cat. He's you a sweetheart. Know. God, if you get in that. <laughs> oh, this is 72 hour age Steve Belly. <laughs> gross. It's been fed years, years of bacon. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just PSA, y'all. Mitch is not going to eat our cat. He no. is perfectly fine. Steve is our baby. It's not going to happen. We have a special announcement. Oh, uh, do we? Steve has been cooked. <laughs> <laughs> and his fatty belly is super tender and delicious. I don't think it's really a fatty belly anymore, though. It's more just weird loose It's skin. a hangy belly. And man, is it tasty. <laughs> When we first started dating, Steve was real fat, and yeah. he probably would have been tasty then. But ever since he started like running around more, yeah, it's just more of a weird skin thing. Oh Jesus Christ! Don't we all have a weird skin thing? Yes. Mm, you know. Can we up. stop talking about weird skin stuff and just like <laughs> outro this? All right, here we Kay. go. Thank y'all for listening. If you have anything fun to tell us, or uh, you know, just send us a beer to try or something, send us an email, Southern Spirits Podcast at gmail dot com. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Southern Spirits Podcast. Also on Twitter at S Spirits Podcast. You can also send us questions for midweek minis to all of those social medias or to that email address I just gave you. If you have a postcard that you would like viewed and read on the show, as you witnessed earlier, or anything fun to send us, like candy, send it to our P.O. Box, which is P.O. Box 1743 in Hartsell, Alabama. That's H-A-R-T-S-E-L-L-E 35640 just realized i forgot the patreon stuff go to patreon.com slash southern spirits podcast if you would like to be a member of the possum Passel, get some fun swag get some fun uh patreon episodes which we just recorded one it's not out yet as of the recording of this for um celebrity conspiracy theories mm-hmm. we covered four of them and it was a real fun time y'all i thought so i enjoyed myself i did too i had a great time you'll also check out the other show on our network trailer trashy where you get to hear the dumb true crime stories kind of like how leo was talking about florida man earlier um there's a bunch of those on there so check that out it's a great show 
I edit it and occasionally make a little appearance. You know, you can hear my voice sometimes in the background being all creepy. Like this. Right here. You like it, Leah? Yeah. <laughs> I'm real drunk, y'all. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. All right, y'all. We will see you next week. Bye, y'all. Bye.